What's going on everyone? I'm Santos and today I'm going to show you how to make an augmented reality app inside Xcode. You don't need any previous experience with ARKit. All you need to do is come ready to learn because I don't know everything but I like to share what I do know. So let's get straight into the video. Okay, so once you've created a new single view application, the first thing we're going to do is head over to our info.plist and set our camera usage description. So to do that, you just click up in the, over here in the left and you would click the plus button over here. And if you search up privacy, you'll see camera usage right here. So you just click that and then you give it a quick description. I'll say we need it for augmented reality. And now we're free to use the camera. After that, you want to head over to the main dot storyboard. Once we're in the storyboard, we're going to set up our UI. It's a very simple UI. All you have to do is add two things. So click in the top right over here and you're going to search up UI view, drag and drop that onto your view. And you're going to want to add some constraints to it by clicking down here in the bottom right and making sure that constraint to margins is unchecked and we're going to click view so it's focused on the super view and we're just going to set it to zero at the top left bottom and right so click view zero view and zero add those four constraints and you'll see it takes up the whole screen so that's perfect now we're going to add our ar kit scene view by just dragging it on again and we're going to repeat the same step, click the constraints, and we're just going to say 0, 0, 0, and 0. So you're just going to add those four constraints, and it takes up the whole screen once again, and now we're set. Now you may be wondering why I added a view and then the AR scene view, and that's because if you want to add other UI elements on top of the scene view, you're going to need that view behind it. I'll insert a picture just so you know what I'm talking about. Now that that's done, we're going to head over to the view controller and start coding. So now that we're in the view controller, the first thing we have to do is connect our AR scene view to the code. And you do that by going to the assistant editor by clicking the two rings in the top right over here. And we're going to navigate to our main storyboard by clicking counterparts, manual, AR box, AR box, main storyboard, main storyboard base. And you'll see that that pops up. I'm just going to hide the left and right panels for a minute just so I can have more space. So you'll see our air scene view is right here and to connect it to our code we just hold control and drag it over here. I'll give it the name AR canvas and great now it's connected so we can close our assistant editor because we won't need that anymore and you'll see that I'm going to get a use of undeclared type AR scene view error here and that's because we have not imported AR kit. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now just import AR kit. And I'm also going to import scene kit because we're going to need that later on. All right, cool. And if you build, all the errors should go away. Perfect. So now let's start coding. The first thing we want to do is right before the view is going to appear, we want to set up our AR session. So to do that, we're just going to override the view will appear method. And we're going to call it super method and pass in the animated variable given here into that. and to set up the AR session, you need what's called a AR configuration. Now there's different types. There's like world tracking, which is what we're going to use, but there's also face tracking if you want to do something like face tracking on the newer iPhones. So what we're going to do for the, um, uh, the box is do you let config equal AR world tracking configuration. And then we're going to call AR canvas dot session dot run and we're going to pass in our configuration and we don't need any options for this so we're just going to remove the options all right cool so now the session is running right before the view appears now if there are, the view is about to disappear there's no reason that the session should be running so what we're going to do is override the view will disappear and do the same thing well actually the opposite thing call the view will disappear pass in the animated variable and now we're going to do ar canvas dot session dot pause awesome so now our AR session is all set up if you were to run it it's just gonna be the camera because we have not added anything to the scene 
So now let's get into that. So the first thing you want to do is create a method called setUpBox. And we're just going to call that inside of the view did load. And inside here is where we're going to set up all of our augmented reality stuff. So what you want to first do is make a scene box. So we're just going to do let box equal scene box. And we're going to give it an initial width, height, length, and chamfer radius. So the width will be 0 0.10. Now, something important to mention is that this is these values are in meters. So be, mi be mindful of that when you're choosing. You don't want to make it too big. So I'm going to do 10 centimeters or 0 0.1 meters for the width, the height, the length. And I'm going to set the chamfer radius to 0. And the chamfer radius is pretty much just like rounded corners. All right, cool. So now we have our box. And we can't place the box directly onto the scene. We have to add nodes onto our um, scene. So what we're going to do is create a node for that box. So we're going to do let box node equal a new CN or scene node. And we're going to add, we're going to pass in our geometry, which is a box. And there we should be good to go. And one of the last things we have to do just to get this up and running is we're going to do box node dot position to give it its position. And that is a scene vector three. And that's going to be, I'm going to give it a CG float, I guess. So I'm going to do zero, zero, and then negative 0 0.5. Keep in mind that this is also in meters. So that way, when we start up the phone and we point it, it's just going to be further away from us, but still at eyes, eyes length or eyes view. Eye level is what I meant to say. OK, so now the last piece of code just to get a plain box up and running is you need to do AR canvas dot scene dot the root node dot add child node. And we're going to add our box node. And there, that's all you need to just get a plain white box. If we were to run it right now, we'll see a static white box. So let's do that. All right, awesome. So now you can see our static box is starting to look a bit nicer, has a bunch of random colors. And yeah, so awesome. So we have our static box in our scene, not doing much. But now let's add some color to it. So to add some color, we're going to first need a an array of colors, obviously. So the box is obviously six sides. So I'm going to give six colors. I'm going to say UI color dot purple, let's say. Let's go with blue, red, black, um, orange, and yellow. Is that six? Perfect. OK, so now we have our colors. However, we can't just add those colors directly onto the box because if you type in box dot materials, which is what um, is how the box is rendered, you'll see that there is an array of scene materials. So we're going to have to map this UI color array to a scene material array. And that's pretty easy. So don't worry. All you have to do is do let box materials equal colors dot map. And we're just going to say let's go do that the curly brackets and we're going to call the variable color and we're returning a scene material. So we're going to say let material equals scene material and we're going to use the empty constructor. And the part that we want to access is material dot diffuse dot contents. And that's where we're going to put the color the specific color. Let me see. What did I mess up? Can't invoke map with an argument. Oh, you have to write in. Sorry, I forgot about that. Now we should be good and we have to return. I'm just gonna move this back because it looks weird. Return material. And now we have our box materials array good to go. So if we do box dot materials equals box materials, we now should have color to our box. So let's run again and just make sure that that worked. So now it's starting to look a bit more like a cube since not everything's the same exact color. 
So finally, let's make it rotate. Awesome, so now the box looks a bit better, looks a bit wild, but at least it's not just plain. So now the last thing we're gonna do is just add an animation or an action to it that's gonna have it rotate 360 degrees. And to do that, what you wanna do is create a scene action. So we're gonna say repeat or rotate once. I'll explain why I named it that in a second. A scene action dot rotate by I'm going to say zero for the x axis, two pi CG float. Also, something to note for this is this is not in degrees, this is in radians. So keep that in mind when you're choosing your values. And for the z axis, I'm going to say zero. And let's say it takes three seconds to rotate once. Now, the reason I named it rotate once is because an action is only run one time. And if you want it to run forever, let's say, you'd have to make another variable called let rotate forever equals scene action dot ro repeat forever. And we're going to pass in rotate once. So now we have our action that's rotating forever. The last thing we have to do is just run it by doing box node dot run action rotate forever and now for the final time we should build and run this and we should have a colorful box that is spinning awesome so now our colorful block is now spinning 360 degrees along the y-axis and everything's perfect and good to go let me know if there's anything i missed anything i should improve or any questions you have in the comments below and i'll be sure to answer them thank you for watching have a great day